Welcome to Laugh Cry DIY. I am your lazy girl, Katie, and today I am performing my court-ordered community service for the DIY community. Today, I'm doing a big project. We are painting a whole ass room. And in planning for that, I realized that many people are very intimidated by painting. So today, I am taking all of my very lazy girl DIY knowledge, condensing it into one video, and giving you all of the painting hacks, tips, and tricks that I've learned to make your life easier. So let's get started. Okay, step one. Before you even start to paint, you need to choose the right paint color. Trust me when I tell you, if you choose a paint color without swatching, you are choosing to cry after painting a room for four hours and hating it. Today, we are going to be painting a room white, and you would think that white is a basic color. No, it's actually one of the hardest colors to paint a room because there are so many things to consider. No matter what color you're choosing, specifically, you need to pay attention to the windows in the room. For example, this is a west facing room with a west window. That drastically affects how a color appears in the room, especially throughout the day. For example, we already painted this room a crisp white and we painted over the white that was in it before. The white that was in it before had such an undertone with this lighting that it looked like the lightest, lightest gray lavender. And even though I've told you this truth, if you don't believe me, let me show you how important swatching is. To find our perfect white, we had to do five swatches. I hope they can read on camera, but you can really see how one might be a brighter white, one might be a little bit warmer of a cream. But again, you have to do this if you want a paint color that you actually like. If you're not sure, ask the people at the hardware store, or I'm linking some videos below from paint experts who have already covered this. You also need to choose that paint in the right finish. There is different types of paint for walls, for furniture, for cabinets and doors. So you wanna make sure that you have the right type of paint and the right sheen. So there's a variety of sheens, but in general, you're gonna go flat, eggshell, semi-gloss, gloss. A flat paint is like highly absorbent, so it will take in moisture and it's harder to clean, especially if you have like fingerprints or pets or dogs or kids. In bathrooms or kitchens where you need to wipe things down a lot, you need to use at least an eggshell paint, if not a glossier paint, because those can be wiped down. Semi-gloss is usually used for doors and trims because it helps the architectural features pop a little bit more. And because these things are often touched, it's easier to wipe down. And you need to make sure that the paint you are painting will actually adhere to where you are. You can see here, we have some very bad peeling and we don't know if that's because the wrong paint was painted over this. So we're gonna test that right now. So in general, there are oil-based paints, which are not water soluble, so they're very strong. And there's latex paint, which is usual house paint, which is water soluble. And we're trying to figure out here if they painted latex paint over an oil-based paint and that's why it's peeling off. And this is how we're gonna test it. You need some rubbing alcohol or some acetone, throw it on a rag and you're gonna rub the base and see if the paint comes off or not. Okay, our paint did come off. So this is not oil, it is latex. So the good thing is we don't have to worry about priming that differently, but we will need to like scrape off and sand down these awkwardly peeling pieces to fix that. Step two, you gotta prep the walls. Now, in general, for any painting projects, this is what you're gonna need. Your paint, a screwdriver, a hammer, spackle, spackling knife, sandpaper, rags, rollers, brushes, a paint tray, optional paint tray insert or foil, painter's tape, plastic baggies, an edger tool, paint roller sticks, paint stirrers, a drop cloth, and a sense of adventure. And I will put that list below in case you need to bring that list to the hardware store. So, back to prep. First things first, you're gonna want to wipe down your walls because you don't realize the dust, the dirt, the grime, the spider webs, and you know, the old memories that still live on and in your walls. So wipe that baby down, you know? Next, go around and take off all the light switches. And I would recommend putting them all in one sandwich baggie. They usually all have the same type of screws. It's not that hard to tell them apart. So that way you can know that everything is in the right place. Also, if you have screws that are unique to the outlet, you can use a bit of painter's tape to tape them to the back and that will make sure that you don't cry later. Additionally, if you want to freshen a room, it is likely that you have a lot of outlets that have the landlord special on them, which means that someone has just painted over them. I would recommend either getting new ones, they're pretty cheap to replace, or bonus points, you can get paintable light switches, which if you're doing like a color in a room, can be very, very helpful to make things more seamless. Next up, you're gonna wanna take any nails or screws out of the wall. Easy peasy. Again, I would also have a bowl nearby to keep all these in. And if you have wall anchors in your wall and you don't know how to get them out and you try to do the usual pliers and pulling things out, you don't need to do that. This is the easy hack. You take the screw that was already in it, screw her a little bit back in, and then you take a hammer and just like the claw, you can rip that out. We're not trying to take these out. We need to re-put up a shelf, but just so you know, easiest way to take out 
an anchor. Next up, we are going to cover all those holes with simple spackle and a putty knife. Pro tip, please people, if you're a beginner, get the pink spackle. This stuff is pink and it dries white. You don't need to make your life more complicated guessing if something is dry. And it's a tiny little hole. You're gonna get a little bit on there. Splatter her on. Let her dry. Pro tip, if you have a hole that's like the size of like, let's say nickel or something like that, you can take a little bit of like cotton or like a damp paper towel, shove it in that hole to build her out and then spackle over it. You're welcome. Oh, and if you have a larger hole, I'm gonna link another video about patching a larger hole. Um, I just wanna say PSA for the future. Guys, stop punching holes in drywall, thank you so much. Once she's dried, you can just take your sanding block, sand her right down. FYI, spackle is made of gypsum, so it's kind of water soluble. So you can sand down, you can also use like a sponge to wipe off any excess. And when I'm sanding, I really like to become one with the wall and I really will just like close my eyes and feel to make sure that it is nice and smooth. Now you also need to tape off anything that matters to you so that it doesn't get covered in paint. And so you need painter's tape. You can see right here we have a pink wall and we have a white wall that are meeting each other. We want to keep that line very neat so we are going to painter's tape that off. Now here's something that nobody tells you. It's very easy for its paint to still make its way underneath the tape, especially if you have textured walls. If you are doing two different colors side by side and you're using painter's tape to try to protect one or the other, especially if you're doing a darker color over a lighter color, the smartest thing to do is to actually run a seal of the base color and then run the darker color over that. And that way when you peel it off, you're gonna have the crispest line ever. There are other things you might wanna tape off. You will probably wanna tape off your doors, your trim, your baseboards, and other things that you don't want to get messed up. And then you're gonna to wanna to cover everything that matters. That was amazing. <laughs> Most people are worried about the floor, but don't forget about your furniture because when you're painting, little speckles can come off the wall and ruin your velvet couch. Also, think about the floor that you're painting on. Is it very porous or does it have like a thick sealer over it? That's how you know if a paint is going to actually stick to the floor or not. Usually, if you have like really nicely sealed hardwood floors, if you get a drop of paint on it, don't wipe it up immediately, let it harden, and then you can just scrape it right off super easy. But regardless, it always helps to keep a damp rag in your back pocket. Alrighty, and now it is time to officially paint. So, a few things. You're gonna wanna prep your paint can. And you can buy special pour top spouts. Um, there's different types of accessories. You just need a putty knife or a screwdriver to pop the top off. You're gonna have your beautiful paint there. But regardless of your paint color, white, blue, purple, black, brown, you do wanna get a paint stick and you do wanna stir it because it will separate. And even if you think that it has not separated, trust me, it has. So you're gonna to wanna to stir her up real nice. By the way, today we are using Polar White by Bare Paint because it ended up being a nice kind of neutral shade between the two rooms that we're painting that actually have different windows in them. Guys, if you're looking for the right white, um, just Google, there's some nice articles about some basic shades um, that are kind of the go-tos for a lot of pros. You also wanna keep your rag on hand. One of the best tips I can tell you is to make sure to keep the rim clean. Um, you don't want that paint pooling in there because then it makes it harder to put the lid back on when you want to. So as you go, keep her clean. We are going to pour her in our paint tray. We have a paint tray and we did get an extra liner. You can also line the paint tray with foil. That's an easy way to throw it away. I've also heard that there are compostable trays. I have not seen them, but that is a pretty cool idea if you wanna be a little bit more eco-friendly. You also wanna wipe down and make sure that there's no dust or dirt in your tray because that will go on your walls. Pouring paint is always fun, but it can be very messy. So you can get a little pour spout if you want, but this is a very easy lazy girl hack. You're just gonna tape little side off so that you can create a little V. My painter's tape is thinner, so I'm gonna double up. You can see here, it creates a little V, and that helps when you're gonna pour, helps guide it, you see? So much easier, a lot less drips. Now, let's talk rollers. The other thing you need to make sure is that you have the right roller for the right paint. So different rollers come in different thicknesses, different naps, and that's for things like textured walls, smooth walls, cabinets, doors, all those things. So you wanna make sure you have the right one. They will usually say what type of surface, what type of sheen they work with, and what type of paint they work with. And we love a beautiful, fresh roller. But when you open them, and especially if they have a thicker nap, they're still gonna have some little like fluffies that are gonna come off. So to prep it, you wanna dampen it slightly. I usually run my hand under a faucet and kind of smush it in. You want it to be lightly damp. Then you can literally take your hand and you get all those little fluffies off. 
You can also roll it onto yourself. <laughs> and that just helps clean it up and make sure that it's super smooth. So first things first, you wanna load your roller. Different people have different techniques. You basically want enough paint that is soaking down to the bottom so that as you do it, it's nice and evenly distributed. But you don't want her dripping. So I usually just load her up, push her back over your little scraper part right here. And I'm telling you right now, use a paint stick. It is going to be so much easier than taking this little thing. It's gonna save your arms, your muscle, and your sanity. You can cover so much more quickly with that. Also guys, as you're painting, the really, really important thing is to keep your brushes and your rollers wet. And just the way to do that is just wrap them up in like any plastic baggie, whatever. Wrap them tight, you can put them in the fridge. You can put your whole paint tray covered in the fridge. It'll keep it fresh. Um, and that way you won't ruin your brushes when they harden. This is a wall. And how you paint a wall is this. Think of a frame of a wall, ceiling, sides, bottom and you wanna cut those in, and then you wanna follow with a roller. And this is so that you can make sure that everything is perfectly painted and that you have one continuous wet paint roll. A lot of people like to cut in with a paintbrush. I don't like to do that. I like to use my best friend, my lover, my everything, which is called a paint edger. It's like this little pad and has these little wheels and you run it along the top of something and it perfectly cuts your straight line. It holds a lot of paint and it lets you really easily cut in. So I highly recommend an edger. Secondly, if you're painting with a friend, you should have them cut in and you can follow behind. But if you're painting alone, the key is to just cut in a certain portion at a time so that you can make sure you can follow it up with the roller. Painting can be very tiring. So this is the thing to know. When you start painting a wall, you need to finish that wall all at once. Because if you just do paint half of it, walk away, that dries, it's gonna leave a weird seam, especially if you're doing a darker color. So when you're painting, remember, do I have enough energy to finish this entire wall in one piece? You don't have to do the whole room, but you gotta do the whole wall. And this is the thing to know about an edger too. You can get like a flat paint pan and you can dip it in that. Or to be more precise, because the big thing is you don't want these wheels to get paint on them or they would leave a track on the ceiling. So what I like to do is actually take a paintbrush and load my edger that way, ASMR. This helps you get it right up to the edge. It helps you fill it nicely. And then you can paint smoothly in one gorgeous motion. Now we are starting on a dark wall today. This is a paint and primer in one. We know we're gonna have to do a few coats, but first we're gonna cut in the top. Guys, we have a popcorn ceiling and I don't wanna roll too close to it because it's gonna make the popcorn come down and then we're gonna die of asbestos. So I'm leaving a fine line and then I'll go back it with a trim brush. Sometimes I will also like feather out the line at the bottom. That just helps you make sure it's all like a nice smooth edge when you follow with the roller. And I'm gonna go back with my little brush, which usually if your edger goes straight to the top, it's good, but we're just trying to be healthy and not die of asbestos. Now we're gonna follow with our roller. And again, this key is to create a wet edge. And there's a lot of different techniques people do when they roll. I like to do a little bit of a W pattern That kind of helps distribute a little bit all over, and then you can go back over. And smoother in. Like I said, you want to just make sure you always have a smooth seam. And that, my dears, is how you paint a wall after a few coats gonna look gorgeous, gonna look beautiful. Now, once your walls are all beautiful and white, it is time to hit the trim. And like I said, usually your trim is gonna be a semi-gloss. Um, and it can be a big pain to tape off the floor and all that stuff. So here is a great hack. This also works whether you have hardwood floors or carpet and you need to paint trim. You don't need to worry about being that delicate. Instead, you're gonna get a piece of cardboard and you're gonna put it right there at the base. That way you can be a little bit less discriminant as you paint and Nothing's on the floor. It's genius, it's easy, it's Laugh Cry DIY. That's the channel you're watching right now. And of course, when you're done painting, you are going to need to clean your brushes, your rollers, if you wanna save them, which you do. Easiest way to do that is honestly actually let them soak overnight. That way they will really get totally full of that water and then you can just like rinse them out in the morning. If not, especially for your brushes, you just wanna rinse it out. So you're gonna rinse it until the water is clear. Then I squeeze it out pointing down, and then this is the most important and easiest part. So you're gonna go, you're gonna whip it like, like that. It's 
fun to go outside and you can whip it until all the water stops sprinkling out. That gets out as much loose water in it as it can. And then lay it flat to dry overnight. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you guys paint a room soon. And if you do, think of me while you do it. Okay, bye.